The American dream doesn't exist. There never was an American dream. We all grew up with the American dream. The American dream are, are surprisingly, very interestingly, the things we spend the most amount of money and time on. What are components of the American dream? Owning a home, going to college, having a safe and stable job for 40 years, and then a nice retirement income. All three of those things have been destroyed in the American dream. We already saw in 2009 that the American dream was a total lie in the mortgage industry. A lot of people say, well, I need roots. I need my kids to grow up with a backyard. Factory owners were the initial lenders or the initial people who would sell you your house because they don't want you to move away from the factory. They want you trapped at your job. You know, you picture the white picket fence. The white picket fence is not to keep other people out, it's to keep you in. College, we already know student loan debt has passed $1.1 trillion. And meanwhile, incomes for people ages 18 to 35 have gone straight down. The third part of the American dream, the uh, solid, stable income. In general, the average person stays at their job now about four to five years, not 40 years, that doesn't happen anymore except for our grandparents and parents. Corporate America is very quietly laying everybody off and hiring them back instantly through a temp agency. Why do they do this? So they can pay less money, so they don't have to worry about benefits, so they can fire you more easily without giving you the classic three warnings. We're moving into this freelancer economy. America is made up of 320 million people all of diverse backgrounds. We all have to decide for ourselves what our individual dream is. Don't subscribe to some um, mass hypnosis dream that was designed to get us to spend as much money on t and time on other people's dreams as possible. Choose your own dream and follow that first. Everybody thinks Warren Buffett is like their grandfather. He's kind of like older and cuddly, and then he gives advice every year with his letters and to shareholders. But the reality is Warren Buffett will slit your throat in a dark alley. Like he is not on the side of the average investor. He has never been on the side of the average investor and he never will be. I wrote a book, Trade Like Warren Buffett, I went back to not only his Berkshire Hathaway letters, which were all publicly available, but to his very private letters from his hedge fund days in the 1950s, long before anybody even knew who Warren Buffett was. And I can tell you, he is after your blood. The one thing Warren Buffett has said, which I think investors need to really remember, is that when you buy stock, you're not buying like a poker chip, which you're gonna make or lose on the next hand. If you believe the story of a company, it takes a long time to develop. And I'll give Warren Buffett credit for expressing that in a very concise manner. But, 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 Warren Buff says his favorite holding period is forever. That is a fucking lie. You can bleep that out. <laughs> But that is a fucking lie. Warren Buffett wants you, the average investor, to hold forever because you have one big advantage over Warren Buffett that he can never ever compete with you on. He's buying and selling every day, but he just can't do it as fast as the average investor. It's not like he's gonna buy 100 million shares of IBM tomorrow and sell 100 million shares of IBM the day after. He wants you to hold IBM forever so he can buy and sell without you doing anything. Even with a guy who seems as kind and gentle as Warren Buffett, always look for the good reason and the real reason. If you have a teenager, you know exactly what I mean. There's always a good reason. I want to study at the library. And there's a real reason. All my friends have drugs at the library. So that's the exact same thing with Warren Buffett. When you buy a house, Let's say you're gonna put down an enormous down payment, you're gonna have closing costs, you're gonna have maintenance, you're gonna have mortgage, you're gonna have property taxes. Forget about the tax deduction on the mortgage, it's not that big. Ultimately, you never really own your house. The government owns it, that's why you're paying property taxes, and the bank owns it, which is why you're paying a mortgage. You might argue, well, rent is just flushing the money down the toilet but property taxes and maintenance are not predictable. I had a hurricane hit my house. The landlord has to take ever, care of everything. The rent did not cover his maintenance. I feel bad, but I'm renting, he chose to own. If you really believe housing's a good investment, 
buy a real estate investment trust on the stock market and watch it go up or down and your money's totally liquid, which is an important quality of every good investment. When you're just paying rent, you've saved all of that cash you would have put into, into an investment you're never going to see again and or you're gonna see years and years later. Cash is king. In this uncertain economy, invest that cash in yourself and that is the best return you can possibly have.